Hello internet, welcome back. Um, you join me today in a very messy garage. Um, I've been doing a few jobs over the winter. Nothing on video, because nothing that important to be honest. Bits and bobs, tidying up. Things around the house, uh, very little car content to be honest. But it's, um, it's a relatively nice day today. It's about 10 degrees, very little wind. So I thought what I'd do is have a look at, um, well, let me show you. Yeah, have a look at the, uh, the old girl that's wrapped up at the moment. So this, for anybody that's not been on my channel before, let's do a big unveiling. Gosh, she's well wrapped up. Well wrapped up. Hey, there you go. Things falling all over the place. Here's my seat. Let's pick it up on there. Okay, so <laughs> after that, mm, great content. Um, this is my 1998 Kawasaki ZX. 9R Ninja and uh, ooh, as you can see when she was last used I didn't do a very good job of cleaning her up um, so it's been away since oh I would say probably October last year so not that long to be honest we're in February now um, when I stored her I turned the petrol off I ran the petrol out completely um, to try and stop a little bit of furring up in the carbs um, anybody that has a bike for pretty much summer weather, which I may use this one for, um, we'll know that with carburetor engines, they can get furred up. So what I want to do today is just, um, I'm going to take the seat off, which gives me access to the tank, take the tank off, and I want to get some penetrating oil inside the carbs, because they're obviously empty of fuel. That will hopefully break down any of the gunge that's, that's in there, and maybe then even get her started up, and just, just give her a, a look over, and make sure she's ready for the summer got a uh, oil change to do at some point um did the coolant last year i think it was but i do the oil every year i don't do many miles five or six hundred miles a year uh, but i think last year i did do uh, a few more so she's probably due for a service so uh yeah i'm just going to give her a, a quick look over make sure everything's tip top and um maybe even get her started who knows right anyway stop waffling uh, let's get on with it so first job is the seat bracket uh, that's a 10 millimeter just there you take that out that bracket slides back and it releases the seat so uh, let's do it obviously do yourself a favor bolt back in. Okay, from there just lift the seat. The seat lifts up like that, two pegs at the back which you can see in there and then give it a bit of a wiggle and a bit of a pull and there's a slide at the front there. That slide at the front goes into that bracket on the fuel tank and that's your tank, uh, sorry that's your seat off. Right next job is, uh, I can leave that pipe on because that's just an overflow, it pokes down there um, into, well near the frame for, for any expansion. Two bolts there, two up there, one, two, they're all 13 I believe, uh, could be 12 though, I'll let you know in a minute, uh, but get those out, also have to take off the fuel tap, um, the fuel tap has to come off and there's a screw in the middle there, you can't really see it but there's a screw in the middle, believe me, uh, because that will hit the frame if you try and pull the tank off, so fuel tap off, four bolts, uh, make sure you keep that in the orientation it's in at the moment because that's where your seat slides in so you won't get the seat in if it's the wrong way around. All right let's get them out. Well I was way off at the 12 mil there were 10 <laughs> I should know taking it apart enough times. There you go 10 10 and then I trust the old screwdriver attachment. Way up with that one. Uh, with that one there you go one bracket and the ones at the front there we go just gonna crack them off try not to scratch the tank should have put a bigger extension on careful reeves there we go and then we'll get the screwdriver on those I've got enough long extensions i should have done this with a long extension but once you cracked them they're not too bad there you go screwdriver gets that one out the same in there. 
think it was only last year they were actually taken off anyway. So there you go. So fingers in. Oop, let's tilt the steering a bit. Get me some access. There you go. One of those out. See, they're quite skinny things. Very shallow thread. And tilt the steering back in there. And there you go. Two of those out. Now while we're here, just want to inspect that the rubbers all look okay. And they do. That's good. So uh, fuel tap now. Of course in there, and you probably won't see it very well because it's very dark. We've got the wonderful uh, split pipe joint connector thing, whatever it is. Uh, we have to squash it together and move it out of the way. So I'm going to need two hands for this one. So there you go. A little bit of light in the situation. So there's the clip right in there. Uh, just move that off the barb. And uh, then your pipe should, with a flat-headed screwdriver, just uh, pull straight off. Might want to put something underneath it though, just to catch the uh, surplus petrol, if there is any. So there you go, the pipe is off. Uh, didn't film it because I needed two hands uh, to get it off. Um, now, when you've got that pipe off, I would recommend giving it a really good inspection. Make sure it's not gone sticky or soft or anything like that. But the reason I say that is because, and it's been widely reported from other people around the internet, that the new modern fuel pipes, which are supposed to be good for any kind of fuel, including all this rubbish EFA stuff, um, they tend to perish and rot quite easily. Now I had the same on this. I used a brand new piece of pipe and it got soft and it basically gummed up and it it really did make a right mess of the filter um and what it did on me on the ride out was basically it, it just got that soft with the suction it just closed off and i was left stranded at the side of the road uh, i managed to manipulate it in a way where i just got enough fuel to get me home it's a challenge i can tell you um but i got some more hose uh, so that is a relatively new one, probably six, seven months old. Um, it looks all right visually, but I'm going to have a really good look around that because, like I say, a lot of the modern fuel pipes, you, you seem to have to replace them on a very regular basis. All right, the angle's not going to be brilliant, whichever position I put you in, so you just have to bear with me. So lift it up at the back, gently pull it away. There we go. And there you go tank is off so again a really good look around your your pipe your fuel pipe i'll be honest i'm gonna get you in close squeezing that that's actually starting to brittle up and crack already so this is what i mean um new fuel pipes are ridiculously rubbish so this was the stuff i bought originally um i mean all those numbers obviously mean something um but I did buy it with the specific job to use for transferring petrol from the petrol tank to the pump. Uh, and this is supposed to be a good pipe, but this is the stuff that let me down. Now, when you look at it, it's fine. It's nice and supple. Let me get you in there. It's nice and supple. There's no problems with it. But it only took six months for it to just deteriorate into being that soft and gummy. Closed off the hole. Um... So that was the original pipe I had, which failed on me. This is the pipe I've got at the moment, which, um, again, nice and soft, nice and supple, no problems with it. Um, and this is supposed to be high quality stuff. Um, it cost me quite a lot. So I would expect it to last a bit longer than six months, but I don't know, looking at that, um, maybe it's just the angle I'm gonna get. No, look, look at that. No, start to deteriorate already. So I'm going to replace that, um, which is really rubbish because these other pipes here, let me show you these ones, are original to the bike. And they've obviously lasted, well, what was it, 23 years? Oh, modern stuff, it's rubbish. Ah, so anyway, while I'm in here, um, I just want to take the cover off and have a look at the filter. The filter's a K&M one, um, as you can see. Uh, which in theory should last a lifetime. They just need cleaning and they need uh, a little bit of fogging oil putting on them. So I would take the cover off and uh, have a look what it looks like. There you go. So that's all the screws released. Um, just bear in mind you've got a couple of clips. One there, so you have to screw it completely. And uh, it mirrors on the other side as well. So the screws got to come out completely. 
and in theory if all the screws are loose enough there you go that's what you got so there's your carbs down there and then there's the filter which yeah to be fair isn't looking too bad but needs a clean and uh, yeah it definitely needs re-oiling yeah so as you can see in there bugs are plenty so yeah i'm quite aware that the internet's going to shout at me and tell me i'm doing everything wrong here but um yeah when it's been off the road for a little while i like to get the penetrating oil and give it some in there like that and i'll also get inside the pilot jet holes and stuff like that give them a blast out too and that then will go into the carbs it will go into the engine itself yes it will smoke when i start it up but um at least it's got some uh some small amount of lubrication. Not the right lubrication, but it's got a bit of lubrication. Right. Again, everybody's going to tell me I'm doing this wrong. Blah, blah, blah. My bike. Hmm. So, a little bit of um, choking carb cleaner. Down into the fuel inlet just there. And then I'm going to put the pump on, let that go through the carbs. And it will settle in the carbs and it will start breaking down any fuzzy stuff that's in there. Um, again, I'm going to have to run the bike um and not start it at first just to run that through the system but um all stuff that uh, i like to do and i've done for years but um you feel free to put the comments in i don't mind and ignition on bumpy, 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 bumpy. and give it a little bit of a turnover just to get that into the system um it might try and start but i'm not got any choke on so hopefully it shouldn't Well, it did. <laughs> Good stuff. Right, I'm going to do that a couple more times. So just to get everything lubricated, just to get any crud in the fuel system hopefully purged out. Um, I don't really want to be taking all the carbs off. There's, there's no real need for it. Um, it was running fine before I parked it up. So um, I'm under no illusion that the carbs need stripping down and cleaning out. But if they do, hey, it's another video. So what are you going to clean that filter with? I hear you all asking. Well, it's great you asked. Believe it or not, white vinegar. Yeah, yeah, vinegar. Nah, any kidding. Um, believe it or not, <laughs> some of this stuff, degreaser. Um, it's the stuff they call snow foam. Uh, you water it all down. So um, yeah, this stuff is brilliant for getting old oil off. So yeah, let that soak in for a while, do its magic, then give it a bit of a blast with the pressure washer just to get all the grime out of there. And then they're going over with the airline and um, should be good to go. There you go, all washed, blown out with the pressure washer and then dried off with the airline. Um, looks like new. Perfect. Right, let's get some uh, oil on it. Today we go for the Shell Advanced. Perfect. Now, you don't need much, it just needs a light covering, so we just go... There you go, that'll do, that's all you need. And back in the hole. Cover going back on, don't forget your brackets. There, and there. And the tank back on again, all the screws in, there and there. New bit of fuel pipe on, tucks back on, so get the seat on and um, probably give it a, a bit of a turn over. See if she'll start, see if she'll run. So here we go then. Fuel's on. Alarm off. Choke on. Ignition on. You're joining me for the first start. Ooh, okay. Now, it might be a little bit difficult at first because of all the stuff I've put down the balls. So I kind of expect it. There you go. She's off.
Mainly condensation. She's running good. So I'll let her warm up, make sure everything's okay, check the leaks, the usual sort of stuff. Give it a little ride up the road and uh, yeah, then just grease the chain up. Do the, uh, the bare essentials. She don't get used much, so uh, yeah, she doesn't need a lot of maintenance, but always good to perform a bit when she's been standing in the garage for a little while. And she can have a nice look.